In this lecture, we shall talk about different applications of linear models. We have already seen that linear model is a technique to solve approximate linear equations. So, it is hardly surprising that it has got applications in many diverse fields of activities, because linear system of equations occur in almost every work of science. They are the simplest possible equations. And whenever we have any real life system, naturally the different quantities involved in the system of equation are the outcomes of measurements. And all real life measurements are at best only approximate. Hence, we get approximate linear equations and the way to solve them is as we have already seen linear models. We shall see examples from as diverse fields as agriculture, physics, social sciences and also we will make a little foray into the world of non-linear relations. There are so many different application areas of linear models that it is difficult to choose from them. We have applications in physics, in social sciences, even in animal husbandry and agricultural science. Linear models are also used in factory management and so many other different application areas. In this lecture, we shall take look at a small number of examples. These are chosen not to showcase the diversity of applications, but the different types of linear models that are possible. The very first thing that we will do will be from physics, but in all the cases we will have the following common setup. We shall have a system which will be unknown, that is we will know the general form of its behavior, but not know the exact quantitative details. Into this system will go certain inputs. These inputs will be chosen by us, the statistician, the experimenter and hence these are completely known. These are fixed and completely known. There is no randomness about these. When I put these inputs in the system, we will get some outputs. This output will combine the effect of the inputs as well as the behavior of the system. Now, these outputs are going to be measured. So, these are only approximately known. We shall apply the theory of linear models to relate the output with the input and in the process we shall estimate the unknown quantities or parameters of the system. The first application as I already promised comes from the field of physics. In this example, the system that we will be working with will be a spring. A spring we know elongates in length when you hang different weights from it. So, we can think of the various weights as the inputs. So, in this case, we have a single input that is the weight that we are hanging from the end of the spring. Since we are putting the weights, so we know the exact value of the weight. The output will be the measured extended length. Now, we do not know about the quantitative behavior of the spring, things like what is its original length or what is its spring constant. Our aim is to estimate those quantities based on data. Thus, for our purpose, the spring is made of two unknown quantities, its initial length which we call L0 and the spring constant which we call K. Both these constants are unknown, they are part of the system. The known weights that we hang from the end of the spring are called W1 to Wn. 
So, we are carrying out the same experiment n times, each time with different weights or maybe the same weight multiple times. The measured extended lengths are called y1 to yn. These are all approximate and these constitute the output of our system. Now, we are going to relate the output to the input using a linear equation. The equation is y i is L 0 that is the original length plus the extension due to hanging weight w i which is k times w i. Now, since the measured length is only approximate we write it as y i approximately equal to L naught plus k w i i going from 1 to n. Notice that this is a system of linear equations in two unknowns. If we write it down using matrix notation, we have y, the vector y approximately equal to the matrix with first column all 1s, second column w1 to wn multiplied with the vector of unknowns L0 k. This we immediately recognize to be in the form that we learned to tackle in the very first lecture. I am not going into the details of those formula because in this lecture our aim is just to acquaint ourselves with the different possible application areas and not the mathematical details. The second application comes from a completely different world the world of agriculture. In this case, our system is a plot of paddy and we are interested in studying the effect of different types of fertilizers on the yield of paddy. Thus, again we have a single input which we call fertilizer and there are three different types of fertilizers, one, two, three. It is important to understand that though we are working with three different types of fertilizers, the number of input is just one, namely fertilizer. So, it is the variable fertilizer that is the input. Its different values 1, 2, 3 refer to the levels. The number 3 should never be interpreted as the number of inputs this is a very common mistake among students. The output in this case consists of the measured yields. Here again the outputs are all measured and hence approximate, but the inputs the name of the fertilizer or the type of the fertilizer they are exactly known to the scientist because he or she has applied them consciously. So, there is no randomness or unknown factor in the inputs, but the outputs are actually random. The output as before is the measured yield of that plot of paddy. Thus, in this case the equation will look like y i j, y i j is the yield of the jth plot under ith fertilizer and j also denotes the particular irrigation system used. Then the equation is y i j is approximately mu plus alpha i plus beta j. Mu is the overall effect. As before, you can think of mu as the amount of yield that you will get if you use no fertilizer, no irrigation at all. Then alpha i is the additional effect due to the ith fertilizer and beta j is the additional effect due to the jth irrigation type. You can see that this is again a linear system of equation. The unknowns are mu, 
alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, beta 1, beta 2. So, the technique that we learn in the very first lecture apply to this case as well. The next application is also from agriculture where we just want to continue with the last example, but add in one more factor. So, just as in the last case, we again have our system as a plot of paddy. The inputs, now there are two inputs are different types of fertilizers as before, but also we have a second input different types of irrigation, say manual irrigation and irrigation using a pump. Thus, we have two inputs. The first is fertilizer, the second is irrigation. Fertilizers have got three levels, one, two, three. Irrigation has two levels, one, two. Once again, you were warned not to confuse the number of levels with the number of inputs. The output as before is the measured yield of that plot of paddy. Thus, in this case, the equation will look like y i j, y i j is the yield of the jth plot under ith fertilizer and j also denotes the particular irrigation system used. Then the equation is y i j is approximately mu plus alpha i plus beta j. Mu is the overall effect. As before, you can think of mu as the amount of yield that you will get if you use no fertilizer, no irrigation at all. Then alpha i is the additional effect due to the ith fertilizer and beta j is the additional effect due to the jth irrigation type. You can see that this is again a linear system of equation. The unknowns are mu, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, beta 1, beta 2. So, the technique that we learn in the very first lecture apply to this case as well. The fourth example will come from the field of educational surveys. In educational surveys, we are interested in knowing different factors affecting or influencing the level of education under different circumstances. In this case, the systems are the students, students of a certain type. For instance, in our example, we shall consider students after finishing their plus 2 level. The output here will be the marks in their plus 2 final examination and we want to see how much of these is influenced by inputs like the medium of study up to class 10. In this study, we shall consider two different media of study, English or vernacular. Similarly, the medium of study during the plus 2 level may also have influence on the final result. Again, that has two levels, English or vernacular. We will also consider a third input, monthly income of family. Thus, in this case, we have got three inputs, medium up to 10, medium during plus 2 and monthly income of family. Notice one important difference of this example from the preceding ones. Here, one of the inputs, namely monthly income of family, is a continuous variable. The other two are categories. The output is always a continuous variable. In this case, the equation will be y i, the marks of the i th student, will be mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus gamma x i, which means that the result of the i student may be influenced by the additional effect due to the medium i up to class 10 
beta j the additional effect due to medium j in plus 2 level. Of course, we have the overall mean effect which is mu that is if you do not have any further effect if you stop all the inputs even then the students will get some marks on an average and that average will be called mu. X i is the monthly family income and we have assumed a linear relationship between x i and y. So, we have multiplied x i with a constant gamma. All these Greek symbols here denote the unknown parameters of the system mu, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 and gamma. Remember x i is the monthly family incomes are known exactly, y i s are the marks. So, we again have a system of approximate equation. The fifth application will clarify one common confusion that students have. When we talk about linear equation, we often think of a straight line, something of the form y equal to c plus m x, but linear models go far beyond that. It can even tackle polynomial regression it can be used to fit a curve. For example, if I consider polynomial regression like y is approximately a polynomial of degree 3 in x and we have data x 1 y 1 to x n y n, then the relationship is approximately y i approximately equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus beta 2 x i squared plus beta 3 x i cube. This might look like a nonlinear relation, but do not worry, we are not trying to solve for the x i's, x i's are completely known. We are trying to solve for the betas, observe that it is a perfectly linear thing in the betas. So, since we never have things like beta naught square or beta 1 times beta 2. So, this is linear in parameter. So, this is a very important thing to remember that linear models deals with equations that are linear in the parameter. Now, we will stop with a brief discussion of the terminology. We looked at quite a few applications. There are certain names given to certain classes of applications. If you have only continuous inputs, we call that situation regression. If you have only categorical inputs, that is a case of ANOVA or analysis of variance. If you have both continuous and categorical inputs, that is called ANCOVA, analysis of covariance. The number of categorical inputs is called the way of ANOVA or ANCOVA. For example, we can have one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA, three way ANOVA, etcetera. In this module, we learnt about various real life applications of linear models. Indeed, we have just scratched the surface of the vast possibilities of linear models. If you are uh, just a practicing statistician, in that case, this module was the most important one for you. It will be a good exercise for you to look around and try to find various examples of linear models around you. In the subsequent modules, we will take a look at the underlying 